Good morning, my name is Mariana Ratilio from uh, the University of L'Aquila in Italy and uh, I want to talk to you about the technology and resilience in the reconstruction process and uh, in particular about a case study. After the occurrence of a natural disaster, the actions that follow may be framed into two main fields uh, that are those concerning the immediate post-disaster and those aimed at ensuring a long-term reconstruction. The first include all the activities that have the purpose to secure the population as well as the territory involved. The other field includes the actions that intend to give back a safe and a reconstructed place to its community. While most of the action plans have been defined to allow return to functionality in a short time, the long-term reconstruction has received less attention. In this context, during the last years, there has been a transition from the concept of the as it was, where it was, reconstruction to the build back better one, giving a considerable importance to the issue of resilience as risk mitigation element and to the role played by technology. In this context, this presentation intends to critically illustrate one of the most interesting elements of the technological innovation underway in the city of L'Aquila, sharply hit by the um, 2000 um, earthquake and night earthquake. These are some of the most widespread images of the earthquake in the media. After the earthquake, the so-called Red Zone was established in the L'Aquila Historical Center and the unavailability of all the public and private buildings existing in the municipal area was ordered. Therefore, the historical city center found itself to be emptied of its inhabitants and visitors, leaving room for technicians and companies responsible for the safety work execution. It was in that historical mo moment that the network of underground services of the city was completely redesigned and it happened with an entire urban center available. The smart tunnel was in fact scheduled when the intensive reconstruction of the historical center had not yet begun. The so-called smart tunnel takes the form of an underground tunnel that is walkable by tennis chance where the main city services are housed. The connections to the services by the individual users are also included inside it. It is clear that only in a context of easy reconstruction could be possible to conceive such an ambitious project. Among the main advantages, uh, there is the efficiency of the rainwater collection system, the network's uh, rationalization, the possibility to implement the existing infrastructure with other network services, the fight against the frequent occurrence of uh, illegal uh, connections, and clearly, the easy way to identify and solve faults. This last uh, operation may be carried out without excavating or interrupting urban traffic. Overall, the smart tunnel will be able to open and optimize and improve the management of the underground services of the city. The work was divided into two portions called except. The first except concerns the so-called central axis, which affects the historical city center and which is almost completed. The second one could be defined as a sort of ring around the central axis system that connects the latter to the immediate city skirts. Owing to its considerable extension, it was in turn divided into five lots in particular, lot 1 concerns the San Pietro district, the, the second is related to the San Marciano district and the third is the Villa Comunale district. These three neighbors' hood were built in the 20th century and act as a crown of the historical center of L'Aquila. Going on, lots 4 and 5 are represented by two important urban streets, Via Strinella and Via della Croce Rossa respectively, which cross populous urban districts. 
In the second excerpt, the works of Lot II Samarciano have been started while the administrative preliminary procedure is being completed for the other four. A so complex and important technological system as the smart tunnels under construction in L'Aquila obviously determines the occurrence of critical conditions. Some of them are intrinsic to the system, while others are determined by external factors. Among the ones that are intrinsic to the system, it is possible to include the need to gather and organize all existing networks in a single path and consequently the requirement to modify the, the layout of some of them. These conditions uh, uh, imply the collaboration of all managers. The services continuity guaranteed to users during the work construction by providing temporary network bypasses in the section affected by the passage of the tunnel, the interference management with the gas network which, since it will be uh, housed in the small tunnel, will not have to be dismantled. Moreover, this network has undergone a recent renewal, therefore it has to be effectively safeguarded. The connection management of the new severage system with the existing one, because the former is a um, parted model, while the existing one is uh, unitary. These critical issues were known from the stage of the contract conception. For this reason, they have been the subject of careful planning in such a way as to solve them before the execution in order to avoid delays and variations during the work. The, uh, so the, the construction site project, uh, project was designed and envisaged the, the sub subdivision of except one into seven areas with a base camp located outside of them. For each of these areas, the detailed project was de developed with the identification of the process phases with the related durations, the planning of the excavation fronts, the definition of the work schedule, the preparation of site layouts, within which the auxiliary factor were specified. Yes, services. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, the services area and equipment. This approach would have made it possible to realize different lines of the new infrastructure simultaneously, completing it over a period of 24 months. Nevertheless, this forecast was developed considering the smart tunnel construction regardless of the city reconstruction. Instead, the area affected by the works was characterized by the presence of many open construction sites. In fact, according to data provided by the reconstruction coordination offices, in March 2016, in the urban area affected by the construction of except one, 147 authorizations for construction sites were requested. This situation has continued over time, causing continuous and sudden changes in the scenario regarding the occupied public land, the available roads, the active construction site. It also inevitably uh, forces the actors involved in the smart tunnel construction site and in those which interfere with it to draft numerous and increasingly detailed construction site variants. The effect of this uncontrolled contemporaneity of different processes, objectives and actors have resulted in the absolute rationality lack in the executive process, as well as problems related to the compliance with the contractual de designs, planning and safety. Clearly, the same kind of problems also occurred in the reconstruction site strongly impacted by the execution of the innovative infrastructure. The experience of the construction site of the new L'Aquila Underground Services Network, except one, highlighted the presence of intrinsic criticalities in the work and in the context that were illustrated previously. The latter may be summarized below. Critical issues inherent in the work execution in a historical urban center presence of, of um, uh, archaeological finds, 
The impact of these elements was managed and mitigated in order to develop the, the executive process according to the principles of rationality and safety. Anyway, the critical issue with the greatest impact was identified in the simultaneous presence of the reconstruction site as well as users and commercial activities. This condition denounced the absolute lack of higher order programming that could allow process planning, interventional coordination, predisposition design of the organizational supports, regulation of interconnection and interferences, management of emergencies and first aid, safety requirement definition. There is a reference to a programmatic tool that should have defined actions and strategies through which it was possible to regulate and manage in its entirely the so-called so largest construction site in Europe. This lack is even more seriously in, serious in this period when the construction phase of Excerpt 2 is starting. It has shown additional criticalities with respect to the central axis. As mentioned, in fact, Excerpt 2 is divided into five different lots and every execution has been entrusted to as many companies which have different organizational management methods. To date, for example, the executive project of lots 1 and 2 has been validated. The first is about a construction site project according to a subdivision into seven different macro areas, each equipped with logistical assistant services, boxes for equipment storage, washing stations for vehicles and wheels. On the other hand, the project for the lot 2 construction provided for a single basic logistics area and interventions are carried out according to the chronological order and according to three simultaneous excavation front. Simply, by analyzing the first two projects, completely different method and management system are found. This reality will probably also occur in the uh, other three lots of excerpt two. Likewise, it could be possible to expect the complexification of the general organization following the possible concurrent development of different construction sites of the five lots. For the time being, <coughs> further critical elements. Sorry. For the time being, a further critical element is driven by the fact that the urban traffic affected uh, by except 2 has likely been returning to the city and its citizens. So a detailed analysis of the traffic and mobility plan will have to be performed. In the meantime, a continuous comparison and information exchange with the competent municipal office will be necessary. Finally, an additional element to be noted concerns the overlap between the smart tunnel construction site and that of the strategic urban projects. In light of what has been argued, it is clear that the construction site or except two needs to be perfectly planned and managed in order to avoid irrational and random conditions that could inevitably lead to a safety lack. For this purpose, a methodology has been developed aimed at identifying a high-order tool based on coordination between the institutions and actors involved. This methodology is based on district information modeling that is a beam implementation on an urban scale. It allows to use traditional techniques with advanced technologies integrating in a suitable way geometric and alphanumeric data thanks to the inter interoperability between two different domains, BIM and GIS. The relevant information mainly concerns the contents of the reconstruction progress of all the municipality locations with the related active or completed construction sites. At the same time, it, it involves the traffic and urban mobility plan, the sensitive receptor analysis, the executive project of the underground utilities network of the city. 
On the basis of the continuous updates of the integrated parametric model created, it will be possible to manage better the construction site of except to, to rationally solve any interference with the urban system. It is obvious that the integrated parametric model may be continuously implemented both in terms of a content and definition level and used by the institution involved in the city reconstruction and planning as well as the smart tunnel contract management. It is configured as a control and management tool for the whole system which, flexible and subject to continuous updating, will allow the interference management inspired by principles of rationality and safety. Thank you for uh, your attention.